Hello and welcome to today's video. So in this one, I'm gonna be reviewing the Elgu Saturn II from a miniature printer perspective to see whether or not it's worthwhile picking this thing up to get some fantastic detail or relatively poor detail, who knows, and large amounts of units on your table. So let's get started. Now the Elgu Saturn II is an absolute beast of a machine. It comes with a 10 inch display and it's an 8K display as well. I've been using the Mars 3 for quite some time now, and the reason I chose that versus the original Saturn is it gave a really nice balance between fantastic quality and a decent enough sized build plate. I liked the Saturn that I originally got, but it just wasn't giving me the quality that I wanted. And to get that larger build plate, I didn't want to sacrifice the quality of my miniatures. When the 8K came out, I was definitely taken by it. It gave a bigger build plate than the original Saturn and much better quality as well for your miniatures. So for somebody like me, it made a lot of sense. First up, let's talk about the build quality of this thing. And I've got to say, it's really striking. It's a really striking design. It's got this almost like, I don't know, race car aesthetic. It's the only way I can really describe it. And this kind of angled bit on the front and everything like that. It doesn't bother me, I like it, I think it looks pretty good, but some people might not like it. Obviously it is a big machine that's gonna be sat there, so you know, have a look at some pictures beforehand. It feels really solid compared to my Elgu Mars 3, which felt very plasticky, it's something that I talked about previously. The Saturn II is a really, really solid machine, and you would expect it to be because it is so large. On the front, you've got the power button, and you've also got a relatively large touch screen as well. Now, one thing I wanna to touch on with the touch screen, yep, random, is the fact that it's not that responsive compared to like any of the other machines, like my original Elgu Mars Pro, my Mars 3, and the Saturn that I had previously before I upgraded to the Mars 3. The touchscreen feels relatively unresponsive. There's quite a few times where I've had to jab it a couple of times to actually make it do what it's meant to be doing. It's not the end of the world at all, but it's just something to bear in mind. When you're paying this much money for a machine, it's just a frustrating thing to have. Another thing to point out as well is the USB port is on the side of the machine, not on the front, not on the back, it's on the side. Now, some people will love that. For me, it works because it is tucked out of the way of everything. Never really bothered me that the Mars 3 had the USB port on the front, but I understand why people were frustrated by that, because if you even slightly knock the USB port, it made the USB become non-functional, and you had to like plug it back in so it could ruin a print. Having it on the side keeps it out of the way for me. I'm relatively happy with it, doesn't bother me, but depending where you're gonna place this, it is worthwhile bearing in mind. Before we get on to placement, let's finish off other bits there. So the vat is nice and secure. It comes with the two little screws there that you unscrew, unfasten those, and then you can pop the vat out as well. It has a pour spout, so when you're emptying it, it makes it so much easier and so much less messy than what I was experiencing on the Mars 3. So, so glad to have that back. Build plate is incredibly solid. I haven't had it move or anything like that when I've been scraping the prints off of the build plate after I've been done printing. So very happy with how rigid it all feels and how well put together it is. So another couple of features, especially if you're more safety conscious with the Elgu Saturn 2, is the first one is this 50 bit on the back and it has this like vent attachment here as well. So you can pop this off and then you can put some kind of extraction fan and extraction vent on the back of this as well. So for example, where I've got it here, if I moved it closer to the window, I could pop on this fan and then I could vent it out of the window or into some kind of filtration system. So it's a really nifty little feature. Obviously you could probably cut out a hole yourself, but it's nice that it's on there as well. And there's a lot of FDM 3D printed files as well to create different adapters and stuff that I've seen online. It's something that I'll probably cover in another video in more detail because it definitely it's something that I'm interested in getting put together, so I'll put that together for everybody. The next one as well is you have the built-in filter as well. So obviously I've got two of the smaller ones that you can buy from Elgu. These ones have a much, much larger carbon filter inside of them, which is quite nice. It's the USB port which plugs directly into the USB that's inside of the printer, so that way you don't need to worry about keeping them charged and stuff like that. One thing to note as well, with that USB that is inside there, it doesn't do data, so you can't plug a USB stick in it, and it is meant to be only used for this. So if you've got some kind of resin heater, um, anything like that, you're not gonna be able to use it in there, or you shouldn't use it in there. I'm not gonna test it because I don't wanna fry the machine, because no, my luck, it probably would. But yeah, it's meant to be just for that, but it's a nice little extra, so that way you can have this in there, filtering out all of those resin fumes and everything else. I'm no doctor, so I can't vouch for the safety of it, but it certainly takes a lot of the smell away, which is always a nice little feature there. And then if you combine it with something like the extraction there, you can really make this a better indoor machine, I suppose. So, you know, for those safety conscious ones or people who want to tinker around with filtration, it's got a lot of stuff already in there. So let's talk about <laughs> this size of the machine. And obviously this is the big selling point. When I first got it, it looked a lot smaller than I was expecting. When I was unpackaging it and putting it all together, 
However, when it came to actually putting it on my desk, it felt a hell of a lot bigger than I was expecting. And I suddenly had to move everything around. So obviously I have the wash and cure machine, I have my slap mats as well to capture any like resin or spill and it's what I do all that work on in my cleanup process. And suddenly I was like having to move everything around. Not too much of an issue for the future because everything will be coming out here and going into its own 3D printing space. But at the moment, it is in a relatively small space. So if you are somebody who doesn't have much space, just bear that in mind. It is a really, really big footprint of a machine. It takes up a lot of space on your desk. You've then got that USB sticking out of the side of it as well. So you can't necessarily have it next to something else. It's big. It's very, very, very big. But obviously there's a reason it's big and that's because you've got the massive build plate and you've got that massive vat as well so you can print off so much and very very large prints which i absolutely adore so moving on to the next bit and how does it print and i've got to say i was really really impressed with it one thing to note before going on to the miniatures how they look and the quality that i've been getting from it it's one of the first printers where I've not been able to use like the out of the box settings from things like Chitu Box. I've had to really go back in there and fiddle with them instead. Now caveat before I get into that, you can probably tell that my breath is a little bit steamy right now and that's because it's really cold in the UK. So it could be related to that. And I had to go back in there and really fiddle with the settings and I did get them nailed down. So I believe my exposure time is now three seconds rather than the recommended 2.5 seconds. And I also slowed down things like my retract speeds as well. I'm not too bothered about my prints taking longer because ultimately I'm getting so many more miniatures onto one build plate at the same time. I'd rather do that and get some reliable prints with less failures. But when I had those recommended settings, it was a hell of a lot faster, like a lot faster than what I'm currently printing at, but I was getting a lot of failures. I would always guaranteed have at least a failure in there. Like I said, it could be temperature related. However, since I changed up my settings, I've not had any failures. So I'll throw those up on the screen. If you're picking up this printer, that might work for you. Let's be used with things like Elgo ABS Light Resin, my Sunly Resin that I recently tested as well, and they've come out perfectly fine. So print quality and that print bed. It is a fantastic size. And one of the reasons I upgraded to this is I am printing a lot of miniatures for this channel. So every time a new set comes out for a month with the Mars 3, even though that had a really nice print bed size, I was having to do a multiple prints, which isn't the end of the world, but I'd much rather be able to pack more and more of miniatures onto one build plate, hit print and come back later and just deal with them all in one go. It just makes things easier and more convenient for me. And I can also print off some really big miniatures. So I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. Quality wise, this thing is surprisingly good. Now obviously it packs that 8K screen, but historically you've had something like the original Saturn, which had a 4K screen and then things like the Mars, that also had a 4K screen. And people were getting confused with the fact that they both had a 4K screen, so surely they should be the same quality, but that's not how it works. I use the logic coming from the tech world and mobile phones is pixels per inch. So having a 4K screen on a smaller screen means you're packing in more pixels, which means that quality is more dense, it's able to really focus on those miniatures and give you better qualities. Spreading those pixels out over a larger screen meant that you were losing quality and you weren't getting quite as much definition on those models. You weren't getting them as sharp as you could. However, now having an 8K screen, even though it is packed over an even larger screen than the original Saturn, gives, I believe it's better quality than the Mars 3. And I can attest to that. I'm getting some really fantastic prints. So I've got these ones here by Mammoth Factory Games and they do some really, really detailed prints. They're all like D&D sets and everything and they came out fantastically well. Got some others here from like Highlands Miniatures as well, which look fantastic. Got this big beastie dragon that I did by Mammoth Factory Games as well. And the quality on these is absolutely fantastic. I'm not losing anything like I was originally with my first Elgu Saturn that I used for a little bit you could definitely tell there was a difference between that and something like the better screen on the Mars 3. So when it comes to print quality, this thing is fantastic. It really, really delivers some really, really good results. So if you're in the market for something that you can print off a lot of regiments, a lot of armies and larger models all in one go without having to go back here and slice them and print them and save them and scrape them and clean them and all of that jazz, and you can just do it in like a one go, this is a really, really good printer. Obviously you've got then the jump up in size to something like the Jupiter, which is like an extortionately big machine, and I guess might have some purpose if you're printing things like props, then that might be something worthwhile looking at if you have the budget, but this is a great printer. 
Now, I do want to touch on something that doesn't necessarily affect the Saturn II. However, Elgu are going a little bit mad at the moment when it comes to releasing machines. So, we have things like the Mars 3 and then the Mars 3 Pro, which makes sense. They've always done that. They've always done like the standard and then a Pro version. Then you have like the Saturn and then there's the Saturn S and now there's the Saturn II. And now, a couple of months after that, we've also got the Saturn 8K, which is basically the same machine, slightly different external design, and it doesn't print as tall of prints, but they're really starting to, I guess, flood the market with variations of the same machine. And that worries me a little bit. The Neptune 3 is a prime example. We had the Neptune 3, and then before it had even fully launched, we had the Neptune Pro, and now we have the Neptune Plus, and like the Neptune Plus Plus, or whatever it is. They're really just throwing out loads of the same machine with slightly different variations. At the end of the day, people will all have different uses, so it kind of makes sense in that respect. But I do worry about the lack of support then for the older machines. The Saturn II, for example, I can't get a replacement FEP at the moment. They're just not available anywhere in the UK. If I go onto the Elgu website, they're out of stock. Can't get them on Amazon. It's a bit of a pain because that FEP is a consumable. It's something that is going to run out eventually. I'm sure they'll fix that. I'm sure it's just a stock issue at the moment because it's a relatively early machine. But it is just something worthwhile bearing in mind that you're putting a decent chunk of cash into this and it's a fantastic machine. And I would say if you are somebody who is looking for something big and you want that fantastic quality and you're a miniature printer like me, it's well and truly worthwhile going for if you've got the budget for it. But again, if you're putting that budget behind a machine and then you can't get the consumables you need for it, that could be an issue. I think they will iron it out. I just wish Elgu would maybe slow down just a little bit and stop throwing the same machine out with slight variations because it's just going to get the market a little bit confused. Just a bit of a rant there. Yeah, do with it what you will. So all in all, this is a killer machine. I would say if you're getting into the hobby and this is like your first machine and you're looking at your first purchase, although in hindsight, I kind of wish that I'd gone for something really big that gave the quality. It didn't exist back then, at least for the budget that I had. I would probably say if you're new to this, start with something smaller. So the Elgu Mars 3, for example, is still a fantastic machine. You can get the Mars 3 Pro as well. And there are other machines out there that will still give a really good balance between quality and large build plate. The Saturn II is fantastic for somebody like me, or for somebody, I guess, who's already done a few things, they've already gotten used to resin 3D prints, but because it is so large, you've got more suction in terms of those prints in the vat as it's rising up and all of that. It's also something that's gonna be a bit of a nightmare for cleaning if you are a newcomer to this, because you've always got a much larger build plate. You're gonna have to have all of those consumables ready, like your slap mat, a decent wash and cure machine, a decent wash process for getting all of these things sorted. It's just something to bear in mind. If you are new to the hobby, this is gonna be your first printer, I would maybe say to start with something a little bit smaller so you get to grips with it, you can get to understand the settings and everything else like that. It makes it easier for cleaning all of your prints and getting them off of that. It's just something I would recommend, but again, it's a fantastic machine. Even if you are a newcomer to this and you get the right settings to start with, you can do some really fantastic things with it. So if you've got any questions about the Elgu Saturn 2, throw them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I will do a follow-up in a few months' time, and it just gives me a better chance to really test it out, make sure I don't have any errors with the machine, make sure I don't find any hidden faults with it, and I'll also update you on things like the FEP situation and getting those consumables for the machine, because I'm sure they'll iron it out, and it's just a supply chain issue, but at the moment, it frustrating because that FEP is going to give up at some point and if it does before I can get them then I don't know I have no idea what I'm going to do so <laughs> we will find out who knows Elgu would have probably released 12 variations of the Elgu Saturn 2 by that point so <laughs> yeah stay tuned hope you enjoyed that if you have hit the like and subscribe button come along for some more content I'll see you soon bye